Now we are going to discuss reactive emotional responses. Our reactive responses and behaviors can be completely determined by our primary human needs, which we have already visited and discussed, and is to love and be loved. Our actions are influenced and motivated by these standard human drives and beliefs. Anthony Robbins, a renowned hypnotherapist and neurolinguistic programming instructor, explains that all humans are motivated to either avoid pain or obtain pleasure. We can also refer to this as the pleasure principle on which Freudian psychoanalysis is centered. To fill our sense of emptiness and of needing to feel loved and eliminate our fear of not being loved, we use what Dr. Greg Baer calls getting and protecting behaviors. These include acting like a victim, blaming, lying, running away, or attacking, and are all ways we behave to avoid pain and obtain pleasure in an, in an attempt to fill our sense of emptiness and remedy, remedy our hopes of feeling loved. Running away is an example of avoidance and escape behaviors. If we simply move away from a source of pain, we're less likely to get hurt. Withdrawing, avoiding people, overworking, leaving relationships, avoiding responsibilities and conflicts, and being shy are all forms of running and hiding. Drugs, alcohol, gaming, and other forms of addictions are all ways in which we run. Running is a poor coping mechanism that demonstrates a lack of courage and willingness to confront ourselves and our problems. A more chronic and severe method of running is when we mask our personalities in order to hide our true identity and appear as something that we're not. We misrepresent ourselves by donning a false front and putting on pretenses as an attempt to impress others, not necessarily because they don't accept us, but more importantly, because we do not accept ourselves the way we are. Although past experiences such as ridicule or rejection may have taught us that something about us is unlovable, we attempt to hide those things we deem unworthy about ourselves. We set up false identities or protection mechanisms that may have served us for a time, but are not sustainable. What was once a consequence of our problems is now a cause of our problems. Others may sense our disingenuousness and ulterior motive when desperately seeking for this kind of attention and approval, which will unfortunately have the opposite effect and only turn some people away. Sometimes people are willing to sacrifice a lot in order to feel loved, liked, or needed by someone, such as putting up with repeat abuse or allowing themselves to be taken advantage of. The hope is to develop a deeper level of unconditional love for ourself. If you have a healthy relationship with yourself, then you will not need others to like or accept you, and you will eliminate unhealthy behaviors you have attached to getting others to like you. People are naturally drawn to those who do not aim for the attention and approval of others, but personify emotional security. It requires courage to acknowledge and confront our emotions, as well as the problems we have created, in order to overcome them. By doing so, it will enable us to develop long-lasting problem-solving skills and adaptive emotional responses to deal with life's challenges in more effective, healthier, and less destructive ways. Turning to an addiction is almost always an avoidance behavior to escape the hurt or medicate the pain that you'd rather avoid. Ignoring a serious problem will never make it go away, but will exacerbate problems leading to a series of other problems. Ever notice a feeling of emptiness or a void deep inside? Nearly every addiction or suicide can be traced to a sense of meaninglessness, worthlessness, or no purpose worth living for. Real love never destroys, it only builds. Therefore, we would never be self-destructive if we truly love and accept ourselves. When we reach out for destructive escapes, it is indicative that we do not fully love and accept ourselves the way we are, but have things about ourselves we still reject and are trying to hide. This explains why humans naturally destroy life rather than promote life. Instead of seeking instant gratifications that are essentially substitutes for love and emotionally deadly because they are highly deceptive and addictive, we need to identify the emotional triggers that cause us to reach out for instant gratifications or destructive escapes to put an end to it. So ask yourself, what are you still struggling to accept about yourself that you might attempt to hide or mask from others? And in what ways do you hide or mask your true identity or personality or things you don't accept about yourself? Examples might be that you misrepresent or exaggerate the facts about yourself. In what ways do you want to feel more accepted? 
Do you recognize this insecurity or propensity in either of your parents or caretakers? And if so, spend time explaining. Reflection. These examples of maladaptive responses are common coping behaviors that everyone can relate to because they represent substitutes for love as opposed to the real thing. These patterns come from conditioned forms of love based on areas we have not fully grown into unconditional love and acceptance of ourselves, and because conditional love is modeled to us in different ways throughout our emotional development. Therefore, in what ways do you find yourself avoiding, running, or escaping? Reflecting on past experiences, trace a few events that led you to masking problems or anesthetizing them. Deeply reflect on these answers and questions now. Next questions. If you recognize any reactive emotional responses, what deeper emotions do you believe you are avoiding and why? Take time to really answer these questions as I move through them a little quicker. What poor coping choices or behaviors do you recognize within yourself as a result of suppressed emotions that you're ready to outgrow and change? Try to list a few. Relieving anger. Anger is defined as a reactive emotional response and not considered a primary emotion because it is often first to surface prior to the emergence of deeper suppressed emotions, although the anger itself can oftentimes be suppressed. Therefore, it is often described as a secondary emotion. Anger is a maladaptive emotional response and a getting protected getting and protecting behavior. For example, we can use anger to get what we want. We can get people to give us attention, respect, authority, power, flattery, or approval. But of course, they're giving us those things to avoid our anger, not from genuine love or affection. Anger and projection are probably the most common forms of attacking, and we attack what we don't understand. For those who typically use anger, such as those who primarily play the persecutor role, feel a sense of emptiness and insecurity. Consequently, they use anger as a form of pride to protect themselves from feeling hurt, pain, or other vulnerable feelings. It is commonly used to mask deeper emotional issues, such as feelings of grief, loss, or betrayal, which they don't yet know how to release in a healthy and constructive manner. Although projected anger has a negative association because it is unwelcome and unpleasant, anger itself is not always inappropriate or unnecessary. There can be an appropriate use of anger, even beneficial at times. For instance, anger releases stress chemicals that activate the flight, fight, or sometimes freeze responses. These vital stress chemicals are intended to prompt an immediate response within us to get us out of imminent danger or a bad or harmful situation. The excess production of epinephrine or norepinephrine, often known as adrenaline, from anger will motivate change by signaling that something is wrong and initiate action by propelling us to leave the situation to speak out or seek answers and solutions. Once anger can be felt, expressed, or released without judgment or resistance, we can easily move past it. It's important to relieve suppressed or hidden anger in a safe environment so that it can be released effectively in a constructive manner and not misdirected to others rather than suppressed as a trapped or blocked emotion that has more damaging effects. This would later impel the anger to implode among other things and no one should be subject to the impact of another person's unregulated eruption of anger. One of the most effective ways to release anger without causing others to be a recipient of it is by journaling or writing it out, raw, just the way that you feel it. Write about the subject or person the anger is related to and then take time to meditate on it or sleep on it. Watch your anger begin to dissipate over time. Subsequently, this will enable you to be more resolute about your anger rather than destructive with it. Releasing it served its purpose. In another case, you may feel the need to vocalize it. If so, discuss it with a therapist, a close friend, a family member, or someone who can serve as a soundboard for you. But avoid dwelling in this negative space for long. Prolonged anger can cause further problems and prevent us from moving forward into healing and problem solving when it's intended to move us through the stages of change. 
Before moving to the next section, write or journal about whatever feelings that you have been, that have been stirred up in you, preferably related to your presenting problem. Write out raw just the way you feel it. So if your presenting problem is related to a person or there is an unresolved communication or inexpressed feelings between you, write up a letter and draft an email as though you were going to send them a letter, but absolutely do not send this letter. This exercise is for you to release any unresolved emotions, gain more peace and clarity and feel more complete and resolute. So write the feelings out just as you feel it unregulated. Draft the email or letter addressed in the person's name, then sleep on it and let it go. Give it one to two days if possible. Modify the letter as needed, as you will probably feel differently about it after completing this exercise. Meditate on this letter before making any final decisions. Do not make any decisions out of pressure or urgency. If you feel there are inc incomplete things that you would like to express to someone, make sure that you modify the letter and hopefully it will have softened, you'll have released a lot of your emotions, and then you could decide if you want to actually go ahead and make some changes and send them a letter, or be more prepared to, to have a healthier discussion with this person free of anger. In contrast, you may feel the need to vocalize these emotions, so arrange a time to discuss it with a therapist, close friend, or family member who can serve as a soundboard for you. As the person to listen intently, and unconditionally as an opportunity to talk it out without judgment. This exercise can allow you to better release and process your feelings, alleviating any maladaptive emotional or coping behaviors. And then after completing one or both of these exercises, write a paragraph about your experiences, including how you felt before and after the exercise. And examine, did your feelings on the subject shift or change in any way? If so, was it for the worse or for the better? Be sure not to move forward onto the next section until you've completed these exercises and questions.